The computer is a group of individual devices. Getting these devices to speak to each other, mainly by the way of the CPU, requires information. The operating system, for the most part, is versed at informing the CPU on how to communicate with the system. But what happens when the OS is not there, or it has not arrived as yet? A few things go into effect before the booting up of the operating system. First, a power on self-test is sent throughout the system. This test informs all connected devices to perform a self-check and report back. If POST is successful, the CPU then goes on to speak to the rest of the system. And only when communication is successful can the booting up of the OS finally begin. Devices are driven by their drivers. These drivers, which are provided by manufacturers, assist the OS when communicating with the system. This means for certain hardware, their drivers will not be available until the operating system is up and running. The solution to this problem comes by the way of a low-level software called the firmware. Aided by the CMOS, the firmware can inform the CPU on system-critical devices, such as the RAM and the hard drive. The CPU uses this information to locate the operating system and begin the loading process. Because the firmware is required to run before the initialization of the hardware, conventional storage locations, such as the hard drive and the RAM, are unsuitable. The only solution is to integrate the chip onto the computer's motherboard. Initially, read-only memory, or ROM, was used for storage. But due to its nature, upgrading the firmware was next to impossible. Flash memory eventually replaced ROM which brought about firmware upgrading and even coined the term flashing the BIOS. There were also software revisions. Initially, the firmware was referred to as the Basic Input Output Services or the BIOS. The BIOS came about in the 16-bit processor era. Therefore, it was 16 bits and only had one megabyte of addressing space. As technology evolved, these specifications quickly became insufficient. Intel developed the Extensible Firmware Interface, which was later depreciated in 2005 by the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, or UEFI. Because UEFI runs in both 32-bit and 64-bit modes, it can address greater RAM sizes when compared to the BIOS. UEFI can also accommodate bootable hard drives over 2 terabytes the implementation of power and thermal management, and simplifies the overclocking of CPUs. But even throughout its revisions, the firmware is still being referred to by many as the BIOS. So all along, we have been saying that the firmware, aka the BIOS, informs the CPU on how to speak to the hardware. But the information is not actually stored within the BIOS. It is instead stored in CMOS. Any changes made prior to the booting up of the OS, such as to the time or boot sequence, are all done in CMOS. The CMOS is further aided by a small battery that maintains any changes made to its settings. If the battery is removed or fails, these settings revert back to their initial states. Go to any computer store and you will find a plethora of accessories, ranging from PCI to USB. These accessories are made possible by the firmware. Because the firmware is viewed as a standard, manufacturers can use it as a guideline when designing their own devices. Some manufacturers have even taken it upon themselves to implement supplementary firmware chips onto their devices, providing the user with additional features. So as varied as a computer may be, the firmware helps to bring it all together. This is done by providing system critical information to the CPU, which aids in the booting up of the operating system. And that's all for now on the firmware. For more technology videos, subscribe to the channel. And as always, thank you for watching.